Hello and welcome back. As per request, here is a quick tutorial on how to add designs to a bottle. While a perfect final image depends on lighting and blending, the most critical first step is accurate positioning. That will be our main focus today. But I'll also show you some quick tips for the blending. Even though Affinity does not have 3D tools, we can still use the old school techniques to achieve our goal. If you're super lazy, you could probably use an AI tool like Google Nana Banana, but what's the fun in that, right? But just for fun, here's the comparison between what we are going to do today and the Nano Banana output. I'll let you decide what looks better. Anyway, back to the tutorial. So here is our source image of a shampoo dispenser. To save some time, I've already created a quick label design, which we are going to put onto this dispenser. One thing to keep in mind is that the area of the label should be wider than the actual bottle width. This is of course due to the bend in the 3D space as the label wraps around the bottle. The only good tool we have is the live mesh warp filter in Affinity. Let's add this to our label by using the layers panel. Let's also zoom in to the document for better control. Now most people will try to warp the label design in one step whereas I usually use two warps to get the desired result. I will first condense the label in width to fit the bottle and then add the curvature. We need to set two points in the mesh, which will determine the area that will stay fixed. Usually this is around 70% of the center. We can now select the nodes on the right and move that inside the bottle. Let's repeat that also for the left side. If you have more time, you should probably split this in smaller steps, where the amount of push in would increase as the area is closer to the border. But let's keep things simple for now. The next step to finish the warp effect is to group our warp layer so that we can add another warp filter to it. After we add the warp filter to the new group, we can now add the curvature to the label. Usually, the top area will have a lower curvature than the bottom area. There should be no need to add additional warp points to the mesh. The corner nodes should be enough to get the curvature. I usually eyeball it until it feels correct. Make sure you zoom out and in from time to time to get a better view on how it looks. Remember, if needed, you can fine tune the initial mesh we added. That looks about right for now. The label does not look convincing. And as I mentioned, the positioning is part one, but the most difficult part is making sure the blend and the lighting looks okay. This could be an hour long video explaining what you could do, but here are some quick tips to get that right with a couple of steps. We can first duplicate the warp group and then rasterize it. This will act as a mask in a minute. Next, we can duplicate the image with the bottle. We'll move this duplicate on top of our warp group and turn off the rasterize layer. The idea is to use the duplicated image with the bottle to get the highlights to the label we created. To do that, we can change the blend mode to screen and then adjust the blend ranges so that only a part of the bright areas from the image are used to brighten our label. This of course affected the full image. We need to mask it. For this, we can use the rasterize layer of the label. We are going to need a copy of this later, so let me duplicate it first. Now we can drag and drop this on the icon of the image layer in the layers panel and it will now act as a mask. With this mask in place, the brighten effect only applies to our warped label group. That looks much better already, especially if we compare it with the before and the after. We introduce the same highlights to our label. I do feel like it brightened the left part a bit too much. I'm going to use a copy we created earlier to bring back some color. Let's set its blend mode to soft light, but as you can see, and as expected, this affects the whole label. We can add a rectangle and use the gradient tool to add a horizontal gradient, which goes from 100% opacity to 0% opacity. The color is not so important as this is going to act like a mask. To do that, we can drop this rectangle on the image icon of the label in soft light. Awesome, we got more color in the left area of the label now. The final step is to get the shadows into the label. For this, we can duplicate the layer of the image we used earlier and then change the blend mode of the second copy to multiply. 
we also need to change the blend range so that we selectively add the shadows we need for a realistic label. Pretty cool. Here's the before without the label and here is the final result. For the time we spent on it, it looks pretty convincing. Now let's take a look at another example. We have a nice green bottle and here is the label I want to put on it. I'll just follow the same steps, add our first mesh warp and then compress the width to fit the bottle. We can then group this layer. The keyboard command for grouping the current layer is Ctrl or Command G. Next, we add a second mesh warp and adjust the curvature of the label and also making sure it fits into the bottle nicely. We can now apply similar steps as shown earlier to adjust lighting and blend. For the highlight, I will duplicate the warp label and the bottle image. Use the bottle image in screen blend mode with the adjusted blend range and then apply the duplicated label as a mask. For the shadows this time, I'm going to add them manually by adding a rectangle with a gradient from mid gray to black. For a perfect blend of this gradient, I'll use the hard light blend mode. That looks much better. A final step for this image is the transition of the label with the bottle. It's a bit too harsh. To fix that, I'll do a merge visible from the context menu in the layers panel. This creates a flat single pixel layer of the document. On this pixel layer, I can use the blur brush tool to soften the transition. Pretty cool. Now this image covers the whole composition and I only want it to apply to the border area. To fix that, I can add an empty mask by Alt or Option clicking on the mask icon in the layers panel. With a white brush, I can brush back the blurred areas. Awesome. The cool part is that we mostly work non-destructively, meaning we can go back to our initial label group and make changes as needed, like changing objects or color. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for tuning in. Hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and see you in the next video.